Hi guys, welcome back to the desktop for another retro RPG on a very cold and snowy winter's day in Scotland. And this week I would like to present to this CJ Carilla's Witchcraft, a 1999 role-playing game by Eden Studios. Now it originally came out from Midden Press, but this is the far more common version, the Eden Studios one, and it uses the Uni system in common with a lot of the Eden Studios games, such as the Buffy RPG, the Angel RPG, All Flesh Must Be Eaten and the others whose names I don't remember at this moment. But this came out in 1999. It's a nice little game, and it has the advantage now of being free. If you go on Drive-Thru RPG, if you go on the official CJ Carella's Witchcraft website, you can download a PDF of these rules for nothing. Now, I've got the hardback book here, which I've had for a while, it's a nice game, even though it's not one I've played. It's very similar in my thoughts to The World of Darkness. Essentially, it's a modern day game where magical creatures lurk in the background. And like the other Unisystem games, you can go from being mundane through to being gifted and getting various abilities and powers with that. But let's have a look at the back cover. A game of magic and dark secrets. They are the gifted, feared for their unique powers, and they have been hounded for centuries, and forced to practice their arts in secret. The time of hiding is over. A time of reckoning draws near. It marks the end of an era and the beginning of a new one, or the destruction of all things. The choices the gifted make will determine what the future will hold. Witchcraft is a complete role-playing game. In it you will find a fantastic setting filled with magic, witches, sorcerers, psychics, and the mystical. Detailed character creation rules for the gifted, lesser gifted, mundane, and bast. The bast being the only truly magical species among them, everybody else being humans with powers. A full exposition of the Unisystem rule mechanics, useful for any game in any time setting. Background information on the six associations, the Wiki, the Rosicrucians, the Sentinels, the Cabal of the Psyche, the Twilight Order, and the Solarites. The Solitaires, sorry. Comprehensive descriptions of four metaphysical arts, magical invocations, the second sight, necromancy, and divine inspiration. An overview of supernatural elements of the witchcraft setting, including spirits, ghosts, undead, and other creatures from beyond mundane existence. So, although it's World of Darkness-like, it's probably more closest to Mage. And it's quite a cool game. Let's have a flick through. As I said, I've never played this one, so I'm not that familiar with it. We've got the introduction to the setting here in the form of a diary, sort of setting out different times, telling us as the story goes onwards in different places. Really setting the scene. And there's some lovely artwork. I really do like this artwork. Um, it's kind of grotesque and bizarre. Very nice stuff. But I have to say there's not that much of it. We'll see a bunch in the introductory pages, but I'll point out where I think it's lacking. And um, the Witchcraft RPG, so describing what the RPG is. Then we go into the setting itself. The world. The time of reckoning. The gifted. We go through all that. The covenants. Metaphysics. So the powers. Magic. The Sight, Necromancy, Divine Inspiration, Religion in Witchcraft. And then we're on to roles, so character creation itself. Now that's very nice, very demonic. It looks like at first just like a skull where the skin's melting off. But you can see there's a demon, the horns and things through here. It really does remind me of Angel, where you had the sort of uh, spiked demons who could disguise themselves as humans. You've got various archetypes, so you choose what your archetype is. You know, you're an avenger, someone has wronged you, and now you seek revenge. You're a daredevil, you love to take chances. To you, life without adventure and risk is not worth living. And it gives you lots of suggestions of different types. Now, of course, you don't necessarily have to take these on, but they do help. So you've got seekers of knowledge, students, survivors. As I said, some lovely artwork through it. Wanderers, warriors, weird ones. Character types. So it goes through the gifted. So 
gifted have fully fledged magical powers. We've got left lesser gifted characters with only a touch of supernatural. Mundanes, they have no supernatural skills at all. But they gain in their ordinary skills. And then we've got a big section on the Bast. So feline shapeshifters, which are the truly magical creatures in the game. We go through character associations. So what kind of magical group you're associated with? The Rosicrucians. The Sentinels. The Twilight Order. The Solitaires. Ah, oh, said lovely, lovely artwork. We go through what the attributes are. So the usual strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, perception, and willpower. How to calculate secondary attributes are so life points, edge, endurance points, speed, essence points. Then we've got advantages and disadvantages, qualities and drawbacks as they're called. So addiction, adversary, clown, covetous. Now I've heard people criticizing witchcraft because of this image in particular, because it's got a swastika on it. But let's be honest, it's a demon. They're not supposed to be good things. They're supposed to be demons. So while I am absolutely against Nazism and anybody who thinks the symbol's cool and supports those policies, I despise. Making them the bad guys in a campaign's fine. You're allowed to play Call of Duty and shoot Nazis in the face. Um, so going through the other ones. Emotional problems, honourable, humourless, lazy. There's various advantages and disadvantages, as they would be in any other system. You're a zealot. Then you're onto supernatural qualities and drawbacks. So, various magical effects which can have your character. Then we're onto skills. Standard bunch of skills, so acrobatic, acting, beautician, computing escapism rather oddly for escapism it's the ability to escape from ropes handcuffs and other restraints um i wouldn't say that's escapism i would say that's escapology but escapism is being able to escape the real world and imagine cool things very much like playing a role-playing game but just a slight wording difference in the way i think perhaps Metaphysics, um, possessions. They want archetypes. Now, this is one of the areas I think witchcraft does lack, because while we've got an archetype here, you can be a wiki healer of nature, and you've got all the stats there. There is no image, so if you're just sitting down to play, there's nothing to give you anything to get your teeth into. If I'm just walking in, I do not know anything about this character. If I'm turning up last minute for a game session and just grabbing a template. That's very different from More Flesh Must Be Eaten, where they have full colour plates and the images are really strong, probably because of the horror background of that. I'm also thinking of Shadowrun, where there's all the templates and very clear images, because I've used templates in Shadowrun a few times where I just wanted a simple character. I didn't want to really think about too much what I was creating. Rosicrucian Stage Magician. Rosicrucian Troubleshooter. Bast Alley Cat. I go through different types. Sentinel Warrior Scholars. Lots of different templates, but without images and without wanting to read through all the text, I can't tell you too much. But what artwork there is, is absolutely lovely. I just feel it would have been nice if these characters had been imaged just to give us something to go on straight away. So, the rule system itself, the unit system, which is slightly different to another places, but not much. It's recognisable. There's obviously Witchcraft was the first place the unit system was published, and they've modified the rules since then. Basically, it's the later versions of games being second edition of the rules, etc. But they're very, very similar. Getting scared, fear effects, combat. Um, let's keep skipping through. Different weapon types, poison, supernatural healing and poison. Ranged weapons. Now, the game does quite bias itself towards hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. So, if I'm shooting a 38 
uh, caliber gun. I'm doing a d6 times 3. But if I've got strength 4 and I'm firing a longbow, I'm rolling d8 times 4. So I'm doing far more damage with a longbow than with a 38 caliber gun. It doesn't make a massive difference, but the stronger you are, and remembering you can increase your attributes as you go up, so you can possibly have a strength of 7 or 8 before going far. And you'll be doing massive damage, whereas guns will still be doing the same old damage. Just a bias. Um, I can understand why you'd want to make hand-to-hand -hand combat a major thing, but it feels a bit odd in a modern-day setting. Recuperation. Diceless role-playing, suggesting how to use it without using dice. Improving characters with experience. So it mentions here that you can increase your attributes. Associations, so explaining what the wiki is. And we've got the Brotherhood of the Rose Cross, the Rosicrucians. Again, lovely artwork. If they just transplanted a couple of these images from here, because these do look like character images, and used them on the character templates, I really think it would have helped sell them better. The Sentinels of the Twilight Order. The Cabal of the Psyche. Again, these really do look like they were designed for templates. Just weren't used there. The Solitaires. Metaphysics, so going through the magic system, basically. One of the interesting points, um, I won't search out the exact page, is the fact that mundanes don't believe in magic. So magic actually has a lot of difficulty working past the will of mundanes, who just go, the world shouldn't be this way, and they impose their will and stop magic working. So uh, powerful, gifted characters actually dislike mundanes, because they cancel out their abilities. The more mundanes there are, here it is, the crowd effect, the more willpower is applied. However, if you manage to get magic working in front of people, you've broken their disbelief, and that disadvantage goes away. For a short time. They may justify it later, but for the moment, they believe in magic, so their cancelling it out is gone. It's an interesting little touch, and it stops mages doing massive events in public view. Um, very much a rules way of enforcing the masquerade in Vampire. Symbols of power. Let's keep flicking through. Essence and immortality. Lesser invocations. Got various abilities here. Elemental Earth. Just lots and lots of magical abilities and powers. What your wiki can do, what your Rosicrucians can do. The sight. So many. Just pages and pages detailing out exactly all these abilities. Because it's a game called Witchcraft, so magic should not therefore make up a massive part of the rules. Divine Inspiration, Miracles, The Inspired and Prayers. Then we've got the Supernatural. So, going through the history of the gifted, sensing the reckoning, the new generation, other worlds, supernatural beings, spirits, nature spirits, elementals, wildlings, spirits of the dead and ghosts. The Undead, The Relentless Dead, very cool names. We've got Vampires with a Y, just to differentiate them, I guess. Weaknesses of the Vampire. The Bast, The Demons, Seraphim. So a much more fleshed out um, selection of magical beings than the World of Darkness. The Mad Gods. Some really interesting stuff that, to throw in here. The evil that men do. Followers of the Mad Gods. The Combine. We're getting to the end here. With chronicling. So how to set up your campaign. Create stories, power levels, campaign levels and the like. And we get to some charts at the end. I'll just click through those. 
Now, I haven't talked about the creator of this, CJ Carella, because he is quite a big name in role-playing. Um, I've actually done a number of his books and just never mentioned him before. CJ Carella was the author of the Rifts Manhunter game and worked on the staff writing Rifts books. Um, he's one of the names behind the Unisystem, system, so had a hand in revamping the rules for the Buffy and Angel games. But this is the first game I know of which had his name on the cover. And while all the other games he obviously was a major force behind, this is totally his creation. And it's a lovely, lovely game, and the fact that it's free now is absolutely marvellous. But, as usual, I think I've witted on for quite long enough. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment below, as it does me massive favours with the YouTube algorithm. But, as always, most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.